Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. V. I'm Mr. V. Don't forget to like this video if it taught you anything, and of course subscribe to the channel. So today we have this 2008 Toyota Prius in. Uh, we just put an ABS pump uh, module, whatever you want to call it, the actuator is what I call it, in, and that was on a previous video, and I'll link that previous video here in case you have to do that job as well. And now we're going to go ahead and change out the pump resistor. So. The pump resistor is, is this little box right here. It has a two wire wiring harness going off to it. And it is mounted underneath the dash and it's to the point where at least I can't get to it. Now, you may be able to reach in there with something and get to it, but I just can't bend that way anymore being as old as I am. So what we've done is we've taken off the dash pieces already. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube if you wanna see how the dash comes apart, but really this is just, I wanna focus on this resistor. So car came in had a, 12, a, a C1252 code, which uh, has to do with the pump fault, an electrical fault in the pump. And that could be caused by this resistor. So if we're gonna replace the pump, which it definitely was bad, it had an accumulator leak, it had a C1256, and it had a C1391, which is definitely two codes that say, hey, your pump's bad. But before we send this thing back out uh, onto the streets, we're gonna replace this resistor as well, just to make sure that this pump is protected and uh, we don't mess up the new pump. So this resistor, I would replace this resistor every time you replace the pump. Uh, it is optional, but you know, with the, with the amount of money that the pump costs, I definitely wanna make sure it's protected. So this resistor, what it does is it limits current flow going into the pump and it kind of smooths everything out and makes sure that the, uh, the pump doesn't get too much power coming off the 12 volt side. So. Uh, we got the dash stripped. Again, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. I'm not going to go through making another video on how to pull the dash out. But if you look up the instrument cluster videos on how to remove the, the panel, then that's exactly what you need to get to this part. Again, you may be able to get it from underneath. I don't know how flexible you are, but I'm not. So let's go ahead and take it over to the car. One thing, I do have the car powered down. I have the service plug pulled out of the back. and I do have the 12 volt battery. Uh, disconnected so you definitely want to do that and uh, let me grab the camera I'm gonna go inside and show you where this thing is okay so this is how far I have the dash pulled and if you follow the instructions on removing the instrument cluster part and there's a ton of videos on YouTube on that uh, I didn't really have time to make the video for pulling the dash out I will tell you this be careful with these vents pulling those out uh, they are held in with some really strong clips here, and uh, the uh, dash vents will crack if you put too much pressure on them. I'm dealing with some of that right now on this one and the one that surrounds the uh, key for the car. So this is going to be mounted down here in this area. I'm going to try to uh, focus my camera through the glass. Sometimes my camera has problems with this. And... So, see if I can get my phone here to shed some light in there. So there's a gray box down there. And see if I can get it to focus here. That gray box is held in, see the yellow writing on it, with a 10 millimeter bolt. Now this is looking through the windshield. And that is where this resistor lives. So the 10 millimeter bolt uh, nut, excuse me, is on this side of things and you just loosen it and it pops right off. There's really nothing to it. It's just pulling the dash to get that off. So let me go ahead and pull this out. I'll put them on a bench and we'll do a little uh, comparison between the two. Okay, so this is the new resistor and this is the old resistor. So if you look on the back, it'll read uh, 193.6 milliohms. And that, I, I suppose, is a specification. Now, I've tried to look at specifications uh, for, through ShopKey and, of course, just Googling and through Identifix, and I could not find a specification for this resistor. But, uh, and if I did, if it's, uh, uh, you know, if, it, if the specification is in milliohms, I don't have a milliohm meter, okay? I just have a, a standard ohm meter here. But in situations like this, what I do is I pretty much try to measure the old one and the new one and see if there's any difference. And uh, that will either, you know, that's the best I could do as far as confirming or denying if this part was actually bad or not. And I have no reason really to believe it's bad. I'm just going to change this out just because we're putting a new pump on 
And it's just very strange that you have a resistor this size with such a small specification. So this is the new one right here. One, two, three. So somewhere around, you know, 200 to 300 milliohms is what I'm getting, which is, you know, probably okay. And I'm going to test on this other one here. And, uh, I mean, the meter did just about the same thing there. So, um, you know, the choice is up to you if you want to replace this. It's just for the expense of the part that we just put in, the brand new Toyota part. I'm going to go ahead and put this in, zip the dash back up, get everything reinitialized, and get this car back on the road. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. And I'll try to find more information on this. There's just not a whole lot out there because I don't think many people replace this part. But if this goes bad, if this shorts out, if this, uh, you know, if the resistor blows out in this thing, then, you know, this could cause an issue with the pump not coming on or, you know, possibly limiting the voltage getting to the pump. Because this, this is powered directly through the uh, high speed relay for the pump. So the pump has two relays, has one for low speed and one for high speed. And this is the high speed. So I guess this is some type of current limiter. It does have the heat shield on here. So I, I, I guess this does get hot and it's mounted up in the dash with nothing around it. So I would recommend, you know, if you go back to put this on, you know, put it back where Toyota put it back. I know it's, you know, sometimes tempting to just zip tie this somewhere. Uh, as I saw in one of the threads talking about this piece on Prius chat, but, um, yeah, put this back with the 10 millimeter bolt. It torques down to five Newton meters and so just a little snug should be good. And zip back up the dash and be ready to go. Okay, everybody, I hope that helps somebody out there with their search for this resistor. This is not a very easy one to find and there's not a whole lot of information out there on it. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, VK, I'm on all of those platforms posting uh, just some information that I can't really post on YouTube. So, uh, and don't forget that uh, the ad revenue for this channel does go to scholarships for my automotive students. So uh, we are doing great in that aspect. We got a lot of money going to these students that need it. We're almost to our $10,000 goal. So we're still pushing for that. And again, Leave me a comment down there if you're having a problem with this repair or anything else going on with your Prius, and I'll see what I can do about getting back with you. We'll see you next time on Auto Scholar and Mr. B.